Hey, in this video I want to show you how I made my um, enclosure for uh, CNC. To make stuff slightly trickier, I had only two days to do it, so over the weekend. And um, yeah, I'm kind of on a tight schedule at the moment. And um, I want this video to be more like an um, idea for you how you can make your own case not necessarily a step by step how to do it uh, just consider it as an idea again I record some video before and um, I'm gonna try to edit it in a way that it makes sense um, and I hope you're gonna find it useful I thought I will start from showing you a couple of videos from laser cutting the case it took me a while to figure it out which materials to use um, should I use um, sheet metal or should I use aluminium, what properties they would have, would it be quiet enough, what would be the price, how quickly can I have it made. Um, finally I decided to use a plywood because it was the cheapest and um, easiest um, and the quickest way to make it. Um, plus it had some decent uh, soundproofing qualities. One drawback to that thing was that I had to epoxy the interior quite well. Um, I used a fiberglass filler with the white oxide to tint the epoxy so I can see where I uh, have painted it um, and what kind of thickness uh, has been already applied. On this clip you can already see assembled machine. Uh, I kept the stepper motors outside of the box to reduce the size of it and have a better access in case of maintenance. I bolted the case to the machine to give it more rigidity. I also run um, the cable straight to the top to avoid uh, chips to be building up in the cable so it's easier to clean and it's also easier to waterproof. Um, um, that's the front of the machine. I wasn't really happy with it so I covered that thing with the acrylic later on. I epoxied the back panel and the bottom panel before I um, attached the side panels. Um, so as you can see that's the bottom epoxied and then I attached the front panel and the side panels. Um, it's not painted yet but I will paint it soon. Um, bottom I have that shoot on a quite big angle so the chips shouldn't be sticking to it and uh, water flow should be high enough for them to go down. Here you can see uh, four panels attached uh, to the aluminium frame. It's bolted from the outside with uh, stainless steel screws and then the whole box it's filled with uh, epoxy which makes it amazingly rigid and strong. Here I jumped ahead to a finished interior of the case with the front panel being glued to match the server case on the right. Front panel is made out of uh, matte black acrylic. At the moment it's covered with a protective paper so you cannot see the color. And another big jump in time to the finished case with the doors and uh, some improvements which I had to add after testing it. My first improvement start from the bottom um, where I add the um, acrylic panel to cover the shoot from the drips coming from the top. Um, it was hitting the bottom and splashing around and this is my experimental coolant tank with the pump and 30 liters of water inside. For the cheap collection I used just a mesh drawer with the synthetic fabric, uh, very fine. I put it there as an experiment to see how it behaves, if the water is overflowing or the chips or something. Apparently it's working really well, so I don't think I will be changing it anytime soon. Let's talk about doors. Uh, doors are made out of four layers of acrylic, two frames, just like the one on the front, and two full sheets like the one on the back. Um, I sandwich them all together so they are stronger, less flimsy and with the better soundproofing properties. 
waterproofing the doors it's really hard um, so I decided just to redirect the water uh, instead of waterproofing it so I made that ridge um, which keeps water out um, so the water drips down to that ridge and then it goes into this lower spot and back into the case with the offset from the walls so it doesn't uh, go under the doors um, I'm gonna explain you better on this side when the water drips down and goes over the ridge and then drips into the box um, yeah drips from that edge so it doesn't go under the doors I also add the um, angle to the edge uh, under the doors so the water has only one way to go doesn't go out can go only in and now I want to show you how it looks inside so that's the under the table and that's the big chute uh, which goes under the machine and the empty space on the back it's for the chips going from the behind of the machine um, so the chips goes on the back there and on the front here um, and that's how it looks around and finally I'm able to test my flood cooling and the case together I'll be cutting a pocket hole uh, 5 centimeters by 2 centimeters deep in two passes uh, 1 centimeter each Just to show you, as you can maybe see, it's dry, there is no leaks, uh, even if the front panel looks like this. Uh, yeah, looks nice. Uh, can I open that thing? Nah. You see it's fog everywhere. Here is the GoPro. And now I can wash this mess. Really like it. It's highly rewarding cleaning. And uh, the chips supposed to be going here. Like 
I think I need something with a slightly higher pressure to do it quicker. But anyway, it's, uh, it's quite nice. Just as I said at the beginning, I hope um, you're gonna find some something useful for you in your design. And uh, what can I say? See you next time. Bye.